tonight's video, we're going to get through five stocks to watch tomorrow. The hottest two sectors that move today in the indexes and what to do for Powell's speech. So let's just jump right into it. In regards to Tesla, I want to focus on this name particularly because you held the 50 day moving average. Holding this 50 SMA, you have these two little what we refer to as wicks and wicks as we know are what price rejection. So you rejected right here forming tweezers and holding that level very surprisingly. But nonetheless, we did. What does this mean? It means that this is one of the leaders that's hanging in there. It's certainly acting better than some of the other leaders. You know, Apple had their big day today. Uh, I would just before I even get to Apple, just watch this. See if you can get up to that 291. You have to flip that 285 level first. So to some key levels for you to watch tomorrow. You're seeing the exact opposite ha happen here. You really did not see any love for what we saw today. You have a stock that's still below your 50 day moving average and you have a bear flag, right? So here's your flagpole completely encompass this other bar and you're going across. So you didn't really get any umph out of it today. Now, certain sectors today did see a huge move and it's, it's pretty fascinating as to why. And we're going to cover this more at the end, but with the indexes, but you're seeing a lot of money going to consumer discretionary stocks today. And the reason is because of oil. Now, crude oil futures since the beginning of the year have been moving in line with the S&P, meaning as oil goes up, the S&P has been going down and it's been like this. But what we saw around June 20th is we saw a peak. Once we saw that peak right in these levels, we hit a low and we never came back. Now, with the problems in Europe and what they're going through with their gas crisis, this could actually benefit the S&P since such a large percentage of their earnings is based upon fuel prices, specifically in the consumer discretionary space. It's why you're seeing names such as BJ's act like tech stocks today. You're seeing everybody start to buy Amazon again, right? These stocks are moving through levels that they are never going to see again. This is actually from the newsletter. If you don't get the newsletter, there is a free version in the link in description below. But these kinds of names are all moving. Why? Because the consumer will have more money to spend if prices are where they are. If oil drops, okay, if oil drops, I think it's something like every $10 a barrel of oil drops, it adds like 0.25% to GDP. It's something insane like that. So what does that mean? Well, that means names like Walmart, Target, people are going to shop, they're going to spend money. That bodes well for the consumer. It bodes well for certain financial names too. You could see Visa and MasterCard actually get some use out of this. So just consider that. That's why we move today. Now, we have to see how the, the entire crude oil futures, but what we're seeing here in energy, and we're going to get into some other names here. What you're seeing in energy is you're just seeing a complete implosion. You're breaking that 21. You're trying to hold that trend line and you're just really unable to do it. But you are seeing certain sectors break out. And I will say this, this is the first time in months that you've seen this kind of action. Now, whether or not this lasts tomorrow, what happens with Powell's speech, take this all with a grain of salt. But ENPH, a lot of people were out there today pounding their chest about how great they were buying a breakout. Every breakout I've seen bought in the past two months has not worked. This worked and it worked really well. You know, just to walk you through the trade. I mean, once I broke this level, I actually put a short on and it just did not work out at all. And very rarely are we seeing this kind of buying step in, right? and just take out, the, not the, take out the highs and seeing people step up. Now, whether this continues to move or not remains to be seen, but solars is the hottest space. So you have like TAN, so this is the TAN ETF, kind of a funny name, but you can see here you're above the 21 day. You haven't been above that for two weeks. Look at your volume spike. So you're seeing money come into the space. Uh, the one name that I really like and I've been watching, and it just got away from me today. I'm, I'm not chasing anything in this market, but you really want to watch these kinds of names. And if this market does turn, the solar space is definitely an area that you really need to focus on. I see is a name that I would focus on tomorrow again. Why? We, had, we showed it yesterday as well. Here's your key level. So really what you want to do is if you can get above that 1532 tomorrow, you're probably going to push to that 1594, 1696. This is not going away. They have a phase three trial that seems to be going very well. Three companies came out today and put a $30 target price or close to that on it. One company basically came out and said it's not going to work. 
uh, and I think they put like a $10 target price on it. So someone's going to be wrong. But the way that the stock's acting is that people that read that data like that data, the exact opposite of what happened today when uh, VERU was at a conference. Okay, So I tend to look more at these kinds of names. You can just see how this completely imploded, right? So I tend to look at these stocks more as how is the data being interpreted by the funds that are out there reading it. So a lot of these hedge funds have doctors literally that work for them that do nothing but read uh, phase three trials, phase one trials, and understand this information way better than I possibly ever could. And they have an opinion. They, they render an opinion on the, the, the probability, they assign a probability to it. And that's what you see. That's why IC is holding in there. That's why V E R U is not holding in there. Someone rendered an opinion and said, no, thank you. So when you see something like this and you can get above that level, 1532 is what you're looking for. And then you just want to see if you could push and can possibly go higher. Again, I'm not suggesting by a long shot here that you're out of the woods, but I am suggesting that you might want to start looking at some key names. I do find it interesting and I would look at this tomorrow because if JNK can get above and make a higher high, you can easily get to that 94 level and start seeing if you can work your way up. Why are we buying bonds ahead of Powell's meeting? I don't have an answer for you on that, but I will say that I find it very suspicious that people are deciding that they need to own bonds ahead of it, unless they're doing it because crude oil dropped $5, but that's kind of suspect, right? So I'm not really sure that I'm buying that story. Uh, so another name that I would focus on, this was one that I would focus on. This cold, I've been on the other side with Boyle for a long time. We're finally getting above that 21 day. I would definitely focus on that. The other line that I keep telling people to focus on is this five. Okay, every trade that you see going out there right now, I can almost guarantee you if you're following somebody on social media that's been trading for a long period of time, they're watching the five day on, on daily or whatever time frame they're watching it on. I would suggest that you do the same thing. No one's going to buy anything uh, that is below their five day moving average right now. It's just not going to happen. The, the, the environment's too tumultuous and they're not going to take the risk. They're just going to go to where the highest relative strength is for the moment. And right now that's going to be short natural gas. Now that, that $1.5 trillion that's just sitting out there, okay, until we hit a point with that, and you see we close below the 50, until we figure out how, how this ends, we really don't know where, where the bottom is on this, right? And if you remember, and I'm not suggesting it's Lehman, I'm suggesting there's the possibility to have that kind of shakeup. Systemically, we don't know who they borrowed against. We don't know where their loans are, their debt covenants. There's a lot we don't know. So this UNG can come down a lot lower. Now, with tonight's video, what I really want to do is spend some time going through the indexes because that's going to be the majority of what you need to focus on. OK, and why am I saying that? Because you're in one big trade right now. OK, oil comes down, certain sectors rally. Pal says something, certain sectors rally. It's one big trade. It's usually not like this. But right now we're beholden to macro events, either Russia, Ukraine and sanctions and what's going on in the energy market or Powell and inflation. So it, you have this large trade going on right now. So if you can kind of understand where you are in the pecking order, right? So the last time that we were above here was the infamous Jackson Hole speech. That wasn't a great day the next day, was it? So I'm curious as to why people are so excited to buy ahead of that. But you are above the five on the uh, on the queues. So if you break above this tomorrow and you get above that 300, you could look at TQQ right there. That might be something worth taking a look at. But, you know, I wouldn't be looking at this for anything more than a short term trade. Uh, the anchored VWAP's there. But as I always say, if you're not respecting the, uh, you know, the, the indicator, why am I? And this is clearly not respecting it. So I really don't care about it. But if I'm above that five and I haven't been above there since Jackson Hole and I hit a higher high after Powell's speech, well, then we go into next week and CPI. Well, how are you going to have a bad CPI if, I mean, energy's down, right? We just went through that entire chart. Energy's down. How are you going to have a bad CPI number? I just don't see how you're going to. So here's the spy. Here's your trend line. 390 has been the level. You are above your five day. Here's your 50. You're still below. You're not out of the woods, but you are trying to bang a U-turn here. So it's a really good sign, and we're going to have to watch and see how this plays out. 
that's all I have for this evening. Spent some time going through this. I covered a lot. Please comment. Uh, I got a lot of comments on the bell on the new intro. I kind of like it. The results are mixed. Feel free to comment on it. Let me know. Maybe there's a better bell sign, but I like the bell a little bit more than the, uh, the cheesy music. If you are interested in the trading room, there is a link in the top right here uh, to preview the trading room and the full trading community and all the education. Everybody have a great evening and trade to win tomorrow.